Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're going to be checking out the new Switcheroo Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which, after both we and our opponents have taken a turn, we switch hands. Now that's pretty crazy, so what kind of deck can we possibly use in this Seasonal Event? Let's go check it out. So the name of the game for this seasonal event is absolutely Nilfgaard Assimilate. And the reason for that is because Assimilate will, of course, boost our cards whenever we play a card that's not from our starting deck. And because we're switching hands with our opponent every turn, that's going to happen very often. So what our goal is going to be with this deck is to keep it very simple. Just focus on Assimilate and then deliberately exclude some other good cards from our deck. You'll notice that we have many provisions to spare because, of course, whenever we have a big shiny card, our opponent is pretty likely to steal it. So in many ways, the ideal way to play is to play your one best card on your first turn. Then once you pass over your hand to your opponent, you have confidence that they're not going to have a game-changing card that they can suddenly use against you. Other than that, things to bear in mind is that although our opponent is going to be using our hand every other turn, they are not going to have our deck. So that means that cards that interact with our deck can provide more value to us than they do to our opponent. So now I'll flip through the deck to show you what we have, and Portal is one of those examples of a card where we're hoping that our opponent doesn't have much for provision cost units, or if they do, that they aren't meaningful and they don't want to play them. But for us, this gives a couple of Assimilate Engines... So Brothens is one of our best cards because not only is he Assimilate, but his deployability will trigger Assimilate twice, and then also we will use that to create a Duchess's Informant, with which we can then create a copy of one of our opponent's Bronze units, which if they've used any of our Bronze Assimilate units means we could also create another copy of those. The Defender is a little bit risky. This is a card that we might also want to play a little bit on the early side because this could allow our opponent to set up some of their engines. But generally speaking, Glynis is going to be one of, if not the highest priority for us to play first, because she is, of course, double Assimilate. So because it's so easy to trigger Assimilate, we want to make sure that we are getting her and not giving our opponent the chance to benefit from this. Imperial Diplomacy is great because it's a way to trigger Assimilate even when we are using our starting hand, because what tends to happen is that we'll play as many Assimilate cards as early as possible, and later on in the round, we're going to want to trigger those Assimilates as much as possible. So by the end of the round, this can be a big boost. Then Imperial Brigade is one of those cards that we can benefit from more than our opponent because, assuming we have a soldier out on the playing field, we will be able to also play the one from our deck. Whereas if our opponent does not have any Imperial Brigades, then this is more or less a dead card to them. And like Imperial Brigade, Hunting Pack has the ability to summon a card from our deck. And Duchess's Informant is another one of our best cards in this deck because it can trigger the Simulates even when we're using our starting hand. So again, this is a card that we want to try to play later on in a round once we have more assimilates out there so that we can get more benefit out of triggering that. But we will see on occasion our opponents jumping at the opportunity, so we might need to play it earlier just to prevent our opponent from sealing it. Then Spores is just in case we have the need to reset. I deliberately did not include any Geralt's in this deck because, like I was saying before, any really strong cards your opponent can use against you. So I think Spores has that nice balance of not being a shiny gold card that they're going to see and immediately try to steal from you, but does have sneaky value if you play it late on in a round and reset one of their big engines. And then Ducal Guard and Ardfiend Heavy Cavalry are going to be the cards that we are going to summon in using Portal. So ideally, we're not having these cards in our hand, we're leaving them in our deck specifically for that purpose. So there's a look at the deck. Overall, very simple. It is almost purely Assimilate. Like I said, we are leaving several provisions on the table deliberately because, remember, any strong cards we have, our opponent can potentially use against us. So a lot of this, so a lot of the seasonal event comes down to just playing more strategically than your opponent and anticipating what they're going to do next. Especially because it is very likely that your opponent will also be running Nilfgaard Assimilate. Now, unfortunately, at the time of my recording this video, the Gwent servers are down slash very inconsistent and keep on dropping me out of games, so I can't give you a full game start to finish because all of them are getting dropped, but I can give you a few funny highlights and memes, if you will, of things that can end up happening in this seasonal event. So let's take a look at some of those. So to give you some context here, we're playing against a fellow Nilfgaard Assimilate opponent, and they have destroyed some of our best cards with those Vilga Forts, and then also stolen our Brothens, and in doing so, they've accumulated a pretty large lead here. Because of that large lead, we see that they actually pass early, and this is a humongous mistake. Never pass early in this seasonal event, because you will see that we will continue to swap hands, and therefore, we can continue playing cards here, and we will not have any card disadvantage. So given that, play however many cards you need, 
And that also means that you can even steal some of their bigger cards, the ones they were planning to play in a future round, even if it's not necessarily the perfect situation for those cards, just to break their future synergies. Just make sure that you don't lose sight of putting up enough points to still win the round. But that means as long as you can catch your opponent, you don't even really need to be that efficient. So at this point, we can just casually play whatever we want to play. There's no real rush here because they so kindly gifted us all these additional cards when they passed early. So in short, whatever you do, don't be that person. Now I got disconnected from that match, so unfortunately there's nothing else to show you there, but I do have something funny to show you from a different match. Because they're going to get either the Duchess or Kahir, which are both good cards. Okay, they are going with Glynis, which is a very strong card, but mostly in the longer rounds. Now they are going to use their leader ability to, well, replay their leader ability after this. And this could even be an infinite loop. This can actually be an infinite loop. They can play as many Anna Henriettas as they'd like right now. And they will do precisely that. Oh, man. <laughs> now, that is great to see. You love to see it. They say, why not? What are you going to do to stop me? The answer is, well, we actually can't. And it will even trigger Glynis' Assimilate. So get all the Assimilate 2s to go. So there is even more reason to go for this. Okay, they may have run out of time there. Well, interesting, to say the least. So there's a look at a Nilfgaard Assimilate deck for the new Switcheroo Seasonal Event. Like I said, unfortunately, given the state of the servers, I can't actually give you a full game because I keep on getting dropped. But hopefully this gives you just enough of an opportunity to see a deck that you can use in the Seasonal Event once the servers start getting in better shape. Thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.